hi there now in this screencast we are going to talk about the CSS box model now we are we are now moving into the territory of uh, layouts we finished with styling and now we're going to see layouts now the basics of layouts start from or stems from the concept of s the box model now if you see there's a this is a sample page uh, created which has an h1 tag a p tag and three hyperlinks now if you see the rendering of this page you will see that you will see the h1 tag and then you will see the p tag over here and then the remaining a tags now you see you you may notice that h1 tag although it has space after that the next tag doesn't begin alongside with it similarly with the p tag it has space over here at the right but the a doesn't begin beside it but if you look at the a tags you will see they have they are one beside the other I mean they don't have they don't start in their own lines they are one beside the other so in CSS or for or for all HTML pages for all HTML pages there are two types of elements elements can be categorized as of two types box or block level elements that means they occupy the whole space I mean they, do, they don't allow others to uh, come in between them okay they occupy the whole space from the beginning till the end even if they don't fill up the complete line they still occupy the whole space whereas there are some elements which are in line that means they don't occupy the whole space they occupy the space only provided by the content I mean this is the content of that element and they occupy this space only I mean, they don't go beyond it there are a few tags which do that for example heading tags are block level tags paragraph is a block level tag whereas a the image tag are all inline tags okay so this is the, you can actually force someone to become inline for example over here for example if I say if I make this paragraph become inline these links will go beside it so let's go and see how we can do that in CSS for example this is there so if I want to force this P to become inline I can just go put the P selector and inside that I'll put display and set it to inline okay and then I'll just close it and then when I see this you will see that it became inline now it allows others to come beside it this way uh, so I can force someone to become inline or again I can force someone to become block so in this case for example if I want to force a the hyperlink which is initially in line I, I can change it to become block by saying display block this way if I just just go back and see it now you see it has it, it comes back into its own place now it, it, it comes back to its own place with occupying the whole space it's now uh, exhibiting the properties of a block element whereas P over here is in line but since the top and the bottom are bold block nothing will come beside it okay so this is how you can force an element so by default CSS elements are either block level or inline elements okay now so the so what's the box property that we're talking about the box model now CSS all elements follow this in CSS all elements are uh, treated as a box as you can saw uh, as you saw that the the display element the display elements occupy the whole row whereas an inline element occupy the, the space equal to its content now the box model states that apart from the content the every element has a border surrounding it every element has a border surrounding it the space from the content to the border is referred to as padding and the space from the border to other elements to any other element beside it or below it or before it is referred to as the margin so these are the three basic uh, properties of the box in CSS or an HTML so which we can control for layouts so as you can see over here this is my this is my content which is given by an h1 tag the space every element every element has this uh, has this border and then the space between the elements content and the border is referred to as padding 
and the space from the border to any other element outside it or beside below or anywhere around it is referred to as the margin okay now let's see how we can set these properties of elements okay now I'm going back to my CSS where I'm just going to delete this and let's let's let, let them act as their default properties either block level or inline the first thing I want to do is put a border around it put a border around it see wh where the border starts for each of those elements so what I can do is I can just go back over here and this case put star my universal selector so it's applied to everyone I'll put a border around it now border is a CSS property CSS property provided to us we can say it uh, there are three properties that you can set for a border we have border color okay I'm just going to say uh, red for now and then we have border width so I'm going to say three pixels and then I have border style so uh, the uh, number of styles given to us we can select a solid one or uh, we can select any one of them as is possible now when I go back we can see them that the whole thing is a border the whole page is a border inside that I have this body and then inside that I have a border for the h1 and the border for this uh, paragraph element and the borders for these as you can see that the border of my block level elements cover even the empty space that's why no element could come in between them even for P which is which is also a block level element it, the border was until the end whereas in case of my uh, hyperlinks they are inline elements so that's why their border is exactly covering the area of the content okay so this is something that we need to see so there are three three properties for borders border color border width and border style now if you don't want to write them separately like this there is a shortcut way of doing it the shortcut way of doing it just put border and you can put all those three properties one after the other the first one is the width and the second one is the color and the third one is the style okay the style and the color can be interchanged but it still works so if I can just remove that or I can just put that into a comment over here okay I can just put that inside a comment and then hopefully that will work now okay as you can see now still I have the same properties so we can either use the longer version of it can either use the longer version that's specifying each of them separately if you don't want to specify the others or we can use the shortcut version where we can just use the border property and all these uh, properties can be defined in a single line so this is usually referred to as the shortcut property of the of it can it is provided for many of the elements now apart from this I can also set borders for specific uh, see every every element has four borders border top border bottom border right and border left so if I don't want the border complete border I can actually make it just have border right so if I go back you can see that not all borders are given only border right is given similarly if I can say border left and it will be applied as border left and again continuing on the same path we have border top something like this and border bottom just go there that's it okay apart from that we can also specify a particular property for each of the size so that the complete say can be different like this border bottom color or border bottom width or border bottom style okay so that's that's we that, that's that's something that we can think about how whichever property that we want to set so these are the allowed ones and it's up to us to decide which one we want to do okay now let's let's go on to the basic one so that I just I'll just remove these I'll just remove these and let's keep our border as we have decided earlier and I'm going to say border uh, the shortcut property of border I'm going to decrease the size to one pixel so that I can just like see what's happening over there and so saying star I don't want it to be complete I just want to say to a let me just 
so we can see that over here I, I just want to remove the star I just want to use a B and h1 that we are the ones that are available in our file over here so this way I just I'm just going to style these items and the borders for these and not for the whole complete body so if you can see over here I have the borders around the ones that are required for me now now let's go and see the other properties now first let's see we saw the border now we saw the border we can have three properties for the border we can we can specify the width we can specify the color and we can specify the style of the border the next I want to see is padding I want to see the padding if I increase the padding you see over here padding means it will increase the space between these items inside inside the border inside the border and the content over here so let's go ahead and see how we can do that let's first for example let's say I want to put a padding over here with uh, of, let's say 30 pixels I'm going to give it a, a big padding to see how it looks like you see this this is this is what happens this is what happens it, this is my element and this is the padding this is 30 pixels padding around it and you see uh, the problem with inline below uh, inline below below uh, if you say uh, a block level element you will see that it starts to occupy the space with uh, it uh, starts to occupy it starts to increase within the space of of the block level element so that's why it means that it's overflowing it's overflowing we can later on see that how we can avoid this overflow but for now we can see that we applied the padding now so the, the space between the elements content this is the content of the element and its border increased so this is this over here is called the border the uh, the, the paddings okay now padding again I can I can actually choose to to choose to specify a specific padding not the whole if I just say padding 30 pixels it will be applied to all all four sides all four sides I can choose a specific one by saying padding top I will just like to edit this so that you can see that so that if example over here let's say I'm going to say padding top so this way it will just add padding to the top part of it top part of the element I can say padding bottom it will add padding to the to the bottom part of it now only and similarly we have padding left and padding right so we can set padding for all uh, different sides there is a sh there is a shortcut for it that is if you want to apply if you have just one value for padding it will be applied to all of them we can have two values in this case for example if I say uh, 20 pixel and then 10 pixel okay if you have two values for this over here the first value the first value over here refers to the padding top and bottom so you can see over here top and bottom is 10 pixels or 20 pixels and then the left hand side is smaller than the top and bottom so left and right is 10 pixels over here so the first one the first value if I put only two values the first will be uh, top and bottom and the second will be left and right okay now apart from that I can also choose to put four values I can choose to put each of them individually let's say 10 then 5 and then 5 okay so this way I can go back and see that now my page has and and the order is something like this it goes from top right bottom left clockwise okay top right bottom left so top is 20 right it's not shown over here because they are block level elements you can see over here inside the inline element this one is 10 this one is 5 and the left one is 5 so it goes from this till the end it's a clockwise through the through the box model okay or you can ask a question that if I don't say three, uh, don't say specify four, specify three only. In in case of three, you will see that the last one will be by default, which is already defined for it. Which be for example, let's say zero, okay? Or it's it's already by default something is defined, so it will stick to that. 
okay so now we have 20 10 and 5 so if only one is defined the padding is applied to all of them if two is defined the first one is for top and bottom and the second one is for left and right and if four is defined it will be top right bottom and left okay so this is about padding apart from padding we also have margins margins is something if you look at this margin is between the two elements between elements so if I can say for example if I say margin margin and this time I'll, I'll again say 30 pixels if I say 30 pixels and then look back you see now I have this margin the top one will be from the boundary of my browser the second one will be from this and then over here also now it's overflowing so that's why you don't see much gap as similar to gap over here because they are inline elements and they are overflowing so you see what's what happened over here margin is something that happens between the elements okay again the same rule applies one value applies to all two values applies to top and bottom left and right and three values applies to top right bottom and left and again also similar to padding we can also apply margin to a specific side saying margin top margin bottom margin right and margin left okay so these are the three properties that you can set for the box apart from this since it's a box I can also set the background for the box okay Let me just do uh, just put margin let's keep it as 30 pixels apart from this we can also say apply a background to my uh, to my to, to the box that is surrounding it I can say background color and for example say white uh, or green okay something that can be seen from my font color so you can see that it applies this green color to it so I have background color I can choose an image as well for example instead of that I can actually say background image whenever you are providing an image you have to provide a URL so you have to put it like this URL and then put the select the URL of for example now I have since now I'm inside the CSS file I have to go outside the CSS file first and then go inside the images and then say photo and then it's like when I go back and see my page it looks something like this now photo is too big that's why you can see that it's 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 something like this so it's like repeating itself if you don't want to repeat the photo you can actually provide a property that says no repeat that will put it uh, you have to put it separately because I'm not using the shortcut so I cannot put no repeat over here I'll have to say background repeat as no repeat this way I can make it like say I cannot I don't want to repeat it now see it's coming from the left hand side I can actually uh, change the position of my background image I can move the background image in the center by just saying background background position okay I can say start it's now starting from the left hand side I can move it to the right hand side okay I can have two values over here top right bottom right based upon the size of the image I can actually set that see now I move the image on the right and it's in the center it's in the center if I want the top position top position of it so I can say top right this way it will start from top right so you'll see that the image the top from the image is from here and it will move to the right position okay so this is something that we we can do with backgrounds again similar to that also background has shortcuts we can just instead of putting background image background repeat and background position I can just put background the shortcut property of it and then specify no the repeat and then I can specify top and right I can just remove this and then you can see it's the same okay this is the shortcut property of it you can specify the URL and then you can specify the repeating and then you can specify the position of your background okay now similar to that for example there is there is an interesting uh, property of background called background uh, size what I can do over here is for example let's say I want to 
apply a ba you, you have seen many websites where you see the background is applied completely to the page it, it's like the whole page is covered so you, although your image is not that big but the, uh, the background covers the whole page usually in single page websites you see something like that now how can we do something like that over here let me just show you let's say body and inside the body I'm going to say background okay I'm going to say background no, not back face sorry background and inside the background I'm going to put the URL and let's say the URL I'm going to choose is again dot dot slash images and photo and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no repeat okay I'm going to make it in the center start from the center and it's expanding it and then I, I ha I'm going to say background size as cover so when I put something like this what happens to my background is my whole image covers it starts from the center and it expands to the whole page so it looks something like this so you can have like a single image covering your whole page based upon uh, how you want it okay so this is how this is this is some of the properties of the box model so you can see that for you can for the box model you can actually set the border you can set the padding you can set the margin and you can also set the background color and patterns. you can actually provide patterns and whatever you have like for example usually in patterns you want to repeat those patterns so you can use the pattern over here and say repeat you can repeat it X repeat it Y or repeat it completely to the whole uh, image okay thank you for watching and I'm going to follow up the screencast with more information about how how to lay out your box elements